Hi, and welcome to Culture of Paint. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at what's caught our eye in the last couple of weeks in the miniatures painting world. For our main topic, we're going to be arguing, discussing, debating, all of that stuff, looking at miniatures that we think might well be future classics. And we'll close out the show, as usual, taking a look at what the hashtag of paint cultists have been up to. Now, Culture of Paint is aimed at a mature audience, so we might use explicit language and discuss adult themes. Now, let's talk about paint. Yeah, going to need to talk about paint and mute your flipping YouTube window, you <laughs> div. Um, that was a bit weird. Um, right, we're in and we're back in the chats there and you're there, everybody's there. Right. Hi, everyone. I'm Henry and joining me tonight are Matt and Andy. Hello, chaps. What? How are we doing? I almost How finished are... my tea already. Should have made mm. two. It's, uh, it's warming up nicely. Still tea weather, mind. Um, but we are we are good to go. Um, we're back. Only been a couple of weeks since the last one, um, which is rather exciting. So hopefully we're getting back nice and regular again now. Uh, Rich can't be with us tonight. Nothing wrong with him. Just fed up with a chat, oh, something like that. What a horrible comment! <laughs> What's happened in the comment? Is that a fine detail brush or Matt's upper lip harsh? No, oh. you'd have to you'd have to paint me with that though to get that effect. <laughs> I mean um. that's shots fired pretty early on then. wow um it's been, it's been <laughs> nine o'clock yet <laughs> you know it's the internet comfort mate. comfort of miniatures and, and and stay for the abuse of your of your hosts um, but that's all good right before people start spotting things in the background that they shouldn't be spotting let's have it's a wrong anyway which is great quite all right. that is a selenor in it though yeah but he says techless it's not techless will Oh no, Will's I see sorry, I was talking about Man, Manzac. Oh yeah, Manzac Miniatures. What what have you decided about your cool Araby project then? Um really good account, go and follow them. Tons of conversions, amazing cities, the Sigmar army, which is now basically non existent because they took all the units out that he based all of his conversions on. So it's gonna be interesting to see. Sounds uh, what about will right. happen. Mm. Right. But let's get them slides. You on the up. points, mate. You on the points. Just Budvar, one of the, the greatest lagers. Glad to yell. Checks now how to do it with them, um, with their they large. Do. They <laughs> right. Do. What's the first pick, Let's Matt? No, first up. Here we go. Oh, right. I was frothing over these. This is an account we featured before at least once, possibly multiple times. Um, but other than the fact that I love the miniatures that they produce, um, I'm on a real thing at the minute for enjoying people seem to have up their presentation game for their photos and their models like you remember like gosh 10 years ago or something like that you remember something a gut from like one of the iron sleet lot and it would be so unique because it wasn't a miniature on a on a blank background it was you know a miniature on a, an old desk or under a cloche or or whatever and it's sort of a book with it, yeah or on a book like but it almost became part of the whole Grim dark Blanchitsu movement, you know that sort of seeing the model like that, it almost you know, became a became a, not a parody of itself. Not that that's not what I mean, but but it, it became a real thing, right? Seeing it like that, mm. and then it feels like recently we're seeing more and more people actually doing little. I don't know quite what the word is. Is it vignette? It's not quite right, but having having an actual background, so seeing the miniatures in situ. Um, and we started to try and do it with a few bits we're doing, but a lot of the, the hobby um, channels that I follow uh, on the socials are doing it. And this channel does it incredibly. This account does it amazingly. Um, and I just think, I think especially when, like when it's a paint job, when it's something like Andy sticking up for one of his, you know, Golden Demon entries or a, or a Monty entry or something like that, it makes sense to see it on a really clean background either you know white gray or black or something like that because it's kind of how you're meant to sit like it's been painted to be viewed like almost in minutiae does that make sense like yeah when i you think see it's it? good to see stuff without distraction sometimes that's it but there you go whereas also... uh, it's these these creative ones though where it's not yeah. just the painting even though the painting is often very very good but it's more about the the feeling and the vibe that they're that they're creating with their their work and I think it, it just gets further emphasized when they stick these cool 
Um, I guess they're backdrops, right? And so I guess, you know, go back and listen to the backdrop episode. Um, but it's, uh, it's just an elaborate, non-permanent backdrop. Um, but yeah, I love it. So uh, that's my pick. I think photography is a um, super cool part of it because e even stuff like, you know, if you use a proper camera, not a phone, and, and you get some nice background blur, it just it adds to so much. And um, normally I do like a, a plain grey background so it's easy to see the paint. But today I took a picture with my camera, but just on my desk. And even just having a few paints in the background mm. just kind of changed... Uh, how you feel and also you see the scale of the mini and stuff like that yeah. i take mm. pictures all the time on my desk with just my phone but phones are so bad for taking pictures of minis um yeah it's just i was like oh i kind of like it just on the desk photo actually um and i like to be consistent with with having the same gray in mind but i think i'd love to do some more pictures with these things but on uh on saturday i'm playing my first game of 10th 40k so i might bring the old camera um and uh yeah do some snazzy photos because I've never posted pictures. I realized. Do it. I like whips when they're on a, you know, on your desk. Yeah. Like, I th like you said, just gives you gives you all a bit more context. What photos are your Eldar? Do you mean? Yeah, I've never. I I looked. Christmas, never, mate. I was looking at them posted. today. What oh, pictures that was on, of it? Mind you, it was on the YouTubes. Yeah, it was. Oh no, it was video. I think it was video. It was vi I never yeah, posted on my Instagram. Games you the, were playing. The army, with, I don't think. Yeah, gets Richard's mm. Richard's robots. Yes, there you go. Um, but yeah, someone mentioning in the chat as well, actually, that this account does have a YouTube channel as well. So yeah, go check it out. Sweet. It's awesome. Um, yeah, the KO army is, this is, I believe, what this is. Um, or certainly the KO stuff looks just like this. Um, so KO. Yeah. Caradron Overlord oh. Sky Dwarfs. Um, yeah, I yeah. just thought knock, knock out. Gotta love it. Um, right, what's up next? Did we leave yes. Rich's pick in as well? So if we got to talk about something, uh, we're not don't because I don't know what he was going to say about it. It'll be a Primaris Marine, whatever. <laughs> wasn't wasn't a Primaris Marine. All no. right. Well, Holy right. moly! What do you think about that? <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, a proper version of my Farsight base. <laughs> um yeah i think that this account's really cool and uh and i've been watching a few of their videos not because i want to do anything on this scale but um just like how to make trees like this and stuff like that and, is all their uh, is all their stuff got deep water creatures and things in it so they've done this diorama and they've taken photos at all four seasons so they posted this video yesterday um and but yeah there's all four seasons with this same house so you can see the trees of like summer and uh and stuff so right. yeah mega mega channel uh, i'm only asking because i'm the the account name thalasso hobby i'm pretty sure Th thalassophobia mm. or something like it's like fear of the deep sea or fear mm. of you know but yeah, massive, it's all deep sea massive stuff, fish yeah. i was gonna say is it all to do with that that's wicked it's just just crazy big like mm. different just different scale as in not the scaling just massive projects you know but i think uh i find it really inspiring and um yeah you can't beat cherry blossom and japanese thing mm -hmm. can you it's just the best uh so yeah loved it that's big old koi mind that isn't it okay a few yeah, i think i think that i think you made that from scratch but the cool. in the in the video he makes the house from scratch and you see all the bits and you can just take little bits from it for for what we do with smaller minis, but um, yeah, what... chunk of resin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like how big? Said, yeah. How big is it? Um, I think when I saw him, when I saw him like put his hand and pulling mm. off the things, he was pulling off the barriers like this. So I'd, I'd say I'm going to guess two foot high or something like that. Bloody hell! Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of resin. <laughs> it's like that is yeah, like this this sort of deep. Just make he was pulling off the sides when he's doing the resin like that. It's huge. Yeah, it's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. It's massive. Absolutely massive. But yeah, great channel. Just watch some videos. It's just fascinating. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, I don't know what mosquito phobia is, the dark apostle. Um, is that a reference to my time at summer camp in America in Texas once? <laughs> 
because that was a bad it was a great time but it was also a terrible time um great diorama idea for golden demon but with the crab in the water absolutely um <laughs> you know the more more crabos we have at golden demon the better let's be honest um upscale the crab to a massive size though <laughs> which which they should have done already right how have we not had a huge like lobster or um, crab with elves on top i'm sure that what the far lane miniatures will make a big crab at some point there we go more crabs that's, that's all i'm here it's all i'm hearing really um one for every season not just the trees that are different sounds really cool um yeah definitely go check out we'll make sure that we put uh the links to all of the accounts that we talk about tonight down in the description so you can go and check them out right what's the next pick I thought you said Rich. We weren't. We weren't doing yeah, Rich's. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> he posted like his full squad the other day, and I know he like the the meme is he doesn't get stuff done, but it's so cool to see. And him. only paints Marines. Yeah, but, you know Marines are great. The, the, the miracle is he did six Marines the same color. That's yeah. the miracle. Mm. Well, well done. You did six all in a row, and they're the same color. He got nice. very, very close with these. So at, at, was it Fess? They were nearly done. And he mm. got to just the backpacks and he didn't do him. And then he <laughs> butterflied <laughs> off. And I was talking to him about... Just he, backpacks? It, well, he, yeah, just the backpacks. Because he, he'd done the dread for the Leviathan release. I'm sorry, the little mozzie in here. Um, and I was like, oh, come on, mate. You've got to finish them. I'd love to show some photos of, of the dread next to your Marines. Um, and he sort of sent me one of them without any backpacks on and all that. I'm like, just just get a fuck out. Um, <laughs> and then like you got to finish it. But then he had that lovely reaction to to the dread. And I think think like a lot of people, that that positivity you get from people saying, Oh yeah, this is wicked. I'd love to see more of that was the nudge that let him get them backpacks done and and uh, finish it. He's done another one since, hasn't he? He's done a apothecary. Um, apothecary. Different mm -hmm. colour though. <laughs> is it still for these guys or yeah there yeah. we go i just i you know I, I would love to own a kill team like that that's it's just yeah i just love it <laughs> it's pretty scott burns saying in the chat we sure these are finished then and can't see the backs that's a different rich that scott you're thinking a rich gray there um <laughs> our rich does paint the back of his miniatures not just the head um, just um <laughs> just takes him or takes him a while <laughs> um, oh, Dark Post was in Indiana. Yeah, them mozzies were all right in Indiana, mate. It was Texas. The, 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 the hurricane mozzies. That was game over, that one. Um, so there's definitely a whiteboard in Warhammer World with crab circled in big letters. Do it. Turbo crab. Do it. Um, now you're right. They look amazing. Um, yeah. He did put the name of them as well. They are so, uh, actually so the Lime Marines. Marines but... They're the prime of limes. And I, I won't hear anything else. They will always be the be the line. Prime marines. of lime. Yeah. It's just it's a nice unique scheme as well. Absolutely. Right? You you can do you see marines every other day, like of the week. They're always on Instagram or wherever. But to see a marine and you actually go, Oh, that's new <laughs> it's quite difficult to do. You mean a Lime Maris marine? Oh. They're calling it a prime prime there prime. in the chats. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful work, everyone. I'd like to give you lemons. <laughs> Have, get some limes. <laughs> but no, they're awesome. I, I, I said it when I did the video about Richard's Dread. Like he's, he's, he's got, I think, a real style. I, I love it when you can see a paint job and and have a good guess at who the mm. who the painter was. Um, so yeah, well Mark done, mate. Seven lids as well for the win. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Really, really lovely job. And who knows? Maybe we'll see a handful more. Um, I don't know. End this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so, as long as you're painting, right? That's all that really matters. Yeah. Uh, unless, of course, you're trying to play games. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> so, right. What, so that was your. Uh, so is that is it for picks? Oh, we did. And of course, Rich not here. We're not going to have to go through any all, no meme, meme stuff. Oh, I've escaped. Lovely. Luckily, there's um, been some horrible memes of me going around. So that's good. Is there? Have there. Right. Gonna be <laughs> at least we're getting hold of them for next next yeah. episode. What's the meme? <laughs> do you mean the meme uh, or do you just mean the, the thumbnail of you with your James Bond? Yeah, people out, have been photoshopping it. I'm like the first time people see my face, first video, not only hands, 
torn to shreds. And I'm Beautiful. like, this is why you only see my hands on videos, Beautiful. you people. And that's why GW did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's like, cool. Let's, well, let's, let's talk well, about... That's why the comments are always off on videos, because you can't be trusted. Yeah, physical appearance comments when it's a video about minis. Fantastic. Well, this is it. <laughs> this is this is it. Um, I'm trying to remember. It was uh, I was a politician, wasn't there? That said something about you know when they haven't got anything else to criticise you about. They'll attack your uh, attack how you look. It means means you're winning, mate. So you're all good. Oh no, they um, attack everything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, before yeah, before we get too deep on that, uh, talking of arguing and attacking, so the topic for tonight's show, this is one I'd been wanting to do for a little while, uh, and it felt like a good time to slot it in. Um, and essentially, it's future classics. So one of the things that, that prompted me to talk about it was I keep referring to, oh, yeah, when I got back in the hobby, recently or when i did this when in fact i got back in as it were to the hobby over a decade ago now um yeah i'm the same which is kind of that's 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 not really it anymore is it like you, you're firmly back in you have been now effectively for, for for a long long time um and there's miniatures that were new or were coming out when i got back in 10 12 whatever it was years ago that now are i think considered classics um already um one uh, for instance, the the Jez Goodwin Corn Juggernaut Lord mm. is one that sort of springs to mind for me of of, of being, and possibly some of the Dark Eldar models. They, that was a, a, around that time, um, and I was sort of thinking, oh, you know, we, we did that. Uh, the last episode we did was on heavy metal, and we featured the Green Knight from way way back in the in the late nineties. You know, and that to me is a a classic miniature, and it got me thinking, what. With, with the sheer volume of miniatures that we're exposed to now, not just Games Workshop, but even, you know, particularly the, 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 the accessibility of 3D printers now, the software that people are able to teach themselves on means we're seeing an awful lot of, you know, busts, um, larger scale models, but particularly busts, I think um, people seem to go for with, with the 3D prints. Like there's, there's just so much stuff now. What is standing out from the crowd what do we think in 10 years time we're going to look back on and think oh that was a that really was a, a defining sort of miniature um so we've been through every single model um currently available from games workshop uh and some other manufacturers um particularly on the large scale side of things because we like paying all sorts of stuff and um there's been a handful of large scale stuff that I think has been the most impressive out of out of everything we're going to show, or that all the most uh, has the biggest shout of being a classic. Um, so there was sort of a loose framework, a loose parameter for what to consider. This wasn't just going to be our favourite models, um, which a lot of the shows can be, and we're like, oh, you can, t we, you know, we could talk about fifty more of these. Well, these we don't think you can talk about many more. We think these genuinely are the, you know, the distilled stone cold classics um so if you've got any other ideas pop pop it in the chat pop it in the comments i'd like to hear your sort of nominations chances are i think we've we've probably already argued it out um and we're going to go through the ones that have more or less made it through um and probably still argue about them a little bit um debate. But it's just, you know debate Discuss. sorry but it's safe to say we already think these miniatures are 11 out of 10s um but it's you can't just go throwing around, you know, legendary, classic things like that without it truly, truly, in my opinion, deserving. It. And our opinions, obviously, as Matt is always saying, are correct. Um, and if you don't like them, you can go fuck yourselves. So, yeah. uh, what's up first? So, first up is. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness me. What a start. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, so this was this is what I was saying about uh, I think some of the larger scale stuff being truly classics. Um, so just so you're aware, like some of the parameters we talked about were um, things that are genre or range defining as a miniature, um, things that all the most prolific painters want to get their mitts on and have a go at, um, and miniatures that genuinely change the scene. 
you know of of miniatures whether that be sculpting or or, or whatever um so lucas pina obviously was going to come up in the chat right yep yep um still the only person to win monty best of show as a sculptor uh, that's testing me on the knowledge but we just say yes um, confidently say yes i've been every year since 14 so in 10 years yeah that'll do there we go yeah. um and were these were these the very these are some of my first memories of his stuff is the witches there's that one witch isn't there with them on her mm. um back mm. um but the, the three has, witches, yeah. He has other stuff before him, but I think, yeah, this is one of the earlier ones. I I hate to know the number sold because <laughs> this, and it, I don't know if it's under 100. It's just n like hardly any, like 80 or something crazy. Yeah, yeah, it will say on his Instagram how many he sold of it, but it's horrible because you're just like, if he did these now, he'd probably sell 1,500, 1, I right. think comfortably his, his second lot and uh 113 there we go so what is it that makes them just so outstanding so important so that makes people regret not having these things and we might as well talk about it potentially makes them incredibly valuable in x amount of years time i think it's just the I don't know. It's just the the feeling it gives you, right? Like you don't you don't really need to have any background. Like sometimes you might need to read a background on a miniature, especially a games workshop thing, to go, Oh yeah, that's cool. But everyone knows these tropes and they're just mm. done in this kind of real balance of realistic but kind of cute in a way, you know. Um, they remind me of the old ladies in Studio Ghibli. You know, like mm -hmm. in How's Moving Castle, where she gets turned into the old lady. It's just mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then you've just got, you know, one's got an owl sat on her head. It's like, <laughs> it's, just, yeah. it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, I'm a, a big Terry Pratchett fan. And this, yeah, this was a, you know, I know they're not, but this, this was a very, you know, I know they're based on other witches anyway. But yeah. And uh, Adam actually saying in the chat, um, Lucas, these models always remind him of an animated movie that's an instant classic. So things like Shrek, Toy Story. So stuff like that mm. where you, you yeah. yeah just like you're saying andy you don't really need any context you don't need anything else it's you know you, all the work has been done for you to a degree um and I, I, it's just it, there's so much character right there's there's people that are mimicking his work or inspired by his work or just directly ripping off his work you know there's all three of those around now um and I think that's probably a marker as well of someone that is being very successful, you know, or someone who's created something, you know, quite unique, quite quite successful. Um, and it, it's, yeah, for, for me, it was these or the the old lady with the with the critters because I think obviously I'm biased, but I think the critters often make his pieces. Um, the, the... I think the best for me is the one with the two fingers wiping the you know she's got the pot and doing the rise the, the, the wise woman, wise woman. Mm. yeah i think that's mm. the best i've got two of them <laughs> um but uh yeah i think there was there was probably yeah there's probably three to five of of his minis that we could we could have picked um but i think just for how early on these were the sign of what was to come um you know we didn't know at the time you know, this is, ooh, what's this, six, seven years ago, is it? I think older. I think it's more than that. 15, Christ. 2015. Mm. Fucking hell, right. Um, definitely been back in a while now. I don't know. Yeah, 10 um, years, actually, I just realised for me. September 2013, I got back in. So uh, Yeah, the one with the owls on her back, Dr. Flintus, yeah. Yeah, there's some, um, yeah. So this is why we think this is the first one that is going into the, the Stone Cold Future Classics draw list, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, yeah, and we're not really going to argue on this one, which is quite good. No. Um, it's crazy how, like, that did, what, 113 copies in 2013 or whatever, and then the Mercenary Dwarf that he did, two, three, was it the, the, earlier this year? No, last year? Yeah. Hmm. 
twelve hundred copies. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's it, you know. Yeah. Like you don't people like this don't come around no. all the time. It's got a unique um, touch, and that's he, like, a- we need absolutely. traditional sculptors still. Mm. Yeah. I think yeah. I think uh, I think for gaming minis and and stuff like mass produced, um, you know, it's got to be CAD. Uh, but yeah. you can't beat the feeling of this like handmade thing. And there's so a handful organic. of pe- there's a handful of people that can do traditional that's untouchable. I think uh, Carrasco included. Mm, Carrasco, you know, Carrasco, yeah. Yeah, I was um, thinking about that. I'm walking the dog actually today. I was like, oh, we probably should have put a Alan Carrasco model in. But anyway, um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, ah, it's just so good, man. It's so good, and I'd love to know how you know we we've seen we've been in the industry now we've seen how much popularity miniatures painting is is garnering and and, and there's no signs of it stopping right but i feel like these miniatures get people that only do gaming miniatures to at least give it a second look yeah because it's got that yeah, that imagination that it, it it sparks that imagination, doesn't it? It sparks that creativity. Whereas perhaps a historical piece may may not, you know, if you're not that way inclined, it's uh, you know, it's um, it's not always not not as not a simple jump, is it? From from painting your uh, painting your orcs and goblins to painting some Polish hussar, but you've got to do correctly and this that and the other. You know, mm. um, I think. I think the fantasy large scale fantasy and that that was something the guys said that we had on from smc wasn't it that um uh how they've seen the shift from historical stuff into fantasy um with the with both the smaller and the larger scale that's going to come up quick smc i'm looking mm-hmm. forward to it not long now is it um I paid anything but that's fine right what's up next up next, ta da! Speaking of Mr. Crasco, we got him in there. <laughs> we did get him in there, of course, we did. Um, yeah, and I think someone's just mentioned it in the chat as well, so don't worry. There we go. Uh, they're, they're here. So this, this is again, so this was a personal one, and then I was like, oh no, actually, do you know what? There is an argument to be made, um, for, for this, and we've just picked no, the whole, are. the whole they release, the game. right? It yeah. was a, it was a Kickstarter, um, it was large-scale fantasy it was orcs done as characters not just as sports it, it, it's black sailors has gone on to have a, a second season tons of additional miniatures um big child have gone on to become a, a hugely successful um studio um you know they did our a lot of work for us on our first fantasy range like you know that they're they're a great studio and, and this was their real sort of catapulting them into into the into the public eye and I, I remember the the um salute that was on when these were the kickstarter for these was was live and there was just so much hype about them yeah i um, agree from G, from people maybe only into gw right they were like you've seen these mental orcs yeah i'm getting them yeah. like a lot of people's first kickstarter before people hated kickstarter <laughs> right you know <laughs> um kickstarter yeah so so valuable to minute small miniatures producers you and know. the painting as well um, well and this was it It was a bit of a perfect storm right you had you had multiple sculptors hitting you know they're, they're really hitting their stride you had amazing painters you had the you know instagram was really taking off at this time um, it was just yeah perfect storm wasn't it yeah it was incredible i think you've got uh, a mass clans paint job a sergio and Ruben in there. Uh, I can't remember all the sculptors of each of these, but I know Patrick Mason, who's mm-hmm. an incredible traditional, did the one on the right. And then Carrasco did the one with the octopus, and I'm sure he did the captain as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Raul did the massive one, and I, I don't know who did the the one on the left, the like shipmate in the red trousers. I can't remember who did who did those. Well, is it a good bit of... Um trivia dr flink saying uh, it started as a private commission for a french collector um from alan and then got picked up by big child 
Is that what that Moo Cows thing was called? Because wasn't the brand... Oh, that rings a bell. Yeah, what was, was that? The brand that did it was called, like, Mental Cows or something like that. I've got to look yeah, it up. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Some, to, someone will know in the chat. too many clicks, but I'll try and so, find it out. Someone's bound to know uh, in there like that. Um, yeah, Will's saying he'd happily display them unpainted. I think that's a really good point as well. I remember Mark Gibbons saying that when we had him on, that he, he collects pieces just to have his sculpts sculptures mm. um, I think the thing with these is the Legion of the Cow that was what it was called there we are. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was tradi traditionally sculpted still I think mm. I think it's hard to to beat that to be honest when it comes to minis like this um, but it's it's those same people that sculpted these all those years ago are still the best traditional sculptors it's Carrasco it's Raul Patrick um, and you, you've got to have some that are so good at traditional that, you know, it's not worth them going to CAD. Although um, my favourite sculpt ever is by Patrick in CAD. So I was going to say, Patrick and Raul are both pretty pretty shit hot on the old. That's it. CADs, aren't they? Um, That's it. Good tool to have. So, yeah, go and go and check out both these producers, Spiro Mirabilis and Big Child Creatives. Um, Big Child have, have had some wonderful um series wonderful kickstarters um I'm looking the, at it now <laughs> the recent um arthurian one the camelot one was really fantastic um yeah really really wonderful very very talented groups of people um producing and so this for me comes under that genre defining change genre changing you know just it, it changed the game when this this dropped and and actually was a huge inspiration for us to be like we can do this we can we can start producing um miniatures and you know maybe one day we'll be getting that same level of um <laughs> sales um <laughs> but also <laughs> it just that recognition and because these these guys sort of championed it um and yeah a good crop right still paint them now to be honest <laughs> next. you can still get some can't you you still get them all, I think, but all I mean, of them. they're still. I'd still be like, yeah, I'd paint that over tons mm. of stuff. I've got a Carrasco orc that I'm desperate to do for October, but what's coming up, mate? It's coming up fast. Don't think I got time. I just don't. <laughs> anyway, mm. spoiler: we'll we've we'll seen the see. slide. We'll have to see if we can make make time. Right, what's up? Oh, a bad one. Here he is. Massive, physically uh, and importantly. <laughs> so I, I'm pretty sure we've talked about original Jez Goodwin, Abbott on the Despoiler, from the late 90s as either a classic or our favourite or our best paint job or something like that, one of those type episodes. I'm sure we, we featured him before. But this was um, kind, kind of, if, if you ignore Primaris for a second, was one of the headline things for for the when 40k changed um right it's yeah just had, spot on you know, really it, it it was a he was a huge character in the in the background um you know it's cuz of him we've got the 40k universe is the way it is right now um or, you know in, in the in the in, in the in the background um but you know, we were still. You had you had the the Gilliman model that was released towards the end of our seventh edition, I think it was, um, who was this enormous great model, um, and then putting up against him was a Baden from the ninety from nineteen ninety seven or whatever. On his, you could keep putting him on bigger and bigger bases, but the 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 model wasn't getting any larger. New, um, so they dropped this guy. Um, the, the 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 glow up, I think it's referred to. Oh, that might be when when we featured him before. Um, tons of options. No cloak. Someone's saying in the chat because Andy's nicked it and stuck it on a Necron. Um, I actually really like him without the cloak. I was just think <laughs> I was just thinking because I don't often see this picture without it. Mm. I think I think with the cloak, it's so wide that it changes the profile and makes him wider than tall. And I always think that's the wrong composition mm. i think it should be taller than than the width um so i really like him like this uh without the cloak actually i've, I've just not looked at it for a long time and 
Uh, but I think that's one thing that makes it pretty incredible, really, is it's got three different faces. Amazing. Yeah. Um, cloak or not cloak. And as soon as they started doing these things in the in their kits, it's it's what we said. Oh, I wish they did this option. And uh, I can't remember what kit came out recently, um, but it had loads of different. Well, the faces. lion had tons that's of options, it. didn't it? Yeah, the lions, the lions. Oh, and Asriel as well. The Asriel mm. kit's amazing for options because you can do the sword or not. And then if he doesn't, then the watcher's carrying it. That's just brilliant. It's what we always wanted. Mm. Um, but yeah, this is just just great, isn't it? I think this mini will just stand the test of time. I think the size of it is brilliant as well. It's just that's it, right? Yeah, mm. and and it was a it, it, just as <clears throat> when we saw him in the nineties, he was one of the coolest models there was. You know, yeah. he he defined him and the Chaos Terminators defined Chaos at that time, and I feel like this new Abaddon also does um and that again i think for me was a was a a criteria for considering something as being a future classic because you know someone wants to get into warhammer 40,000 they're like oh what are the different factions like and you say well there's this guy ezekiel and he's a bit of a badass and you show them this and they'll know if they like chaos or not right when they look at this model yeah um, because it's it's everything that's good about that miniature range hmm. um is it is, is encapsulated uh in this model um my mind's gone blank on the sculptor um seb perbert seb perbert he's only done two forty k minis right um <laughs> you know this is it's uh, it when much like i guess when you're judging painting competitions as well you, you get to almost a point where you have to look at this and go what 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 your fault find almost with it and i think it's quite hard to with this miniature like how could they have made him any better how could they have made him any cooler um and i think as a miniature is very it's very very difficult mm. um i think to, to the argue. only thing they could have done is the double trophy rack and and that's is that not a subjective thing yes it's subjective that's nostalgia kicking in, right? But yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a very easy conversion. <laughs> but actually, it, it this trophy rack you don't you never really see it from when it's front on. It's got a lovely sort of rake to it. It goes mm. sort of starts at the front and rakes up back. I stuck it on a dreadnought because um, it's enormous. Um, but if you had not seen the parallel trophy racks, which are are amazing and very cool, and as Andy says, it a real nostalgic thing. It actually. I mean, I've not seen someone do the conversion, mm. bizarrely. I'm sure hundreds, if not thousands, of people what are you have, on about? have, right? You've did, seen you, mine. did you do it to yours? Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> Apologies. I see a lot of great minis from you. Clearly, clearly wasn't that memorable, right? Compared to, <laughs> compared to this. You can have a look after this you, one, not... right? Um, you know, I was just I trying to think. I did it on a on that new Horus miniature because I, I like the look, but. Yeah, I think I like the choice. It's actually one of the few miniatures I have in front of me. So Where there you we? go. <laughs> yeah, it's good mind, isn't it? But you've changed that model quite a lot. So, all right, so let's have a chat then. Why have you changed him? Because I'm a narcissist and I have to be a special person. Or is it different to everyone else? But <laughs> what made you pick <laughs> him to do it with? That model? Um, was it the model that you wanted to work on? Was it the fact that the character of who he was and sort of the importance of that? What was the... just just getting the cash in mate just you know it's what what getting the likes because uh, because abaddon's really popular no i just um i loved abaddon as a kid like loved it in fact when i was a kid i bought one painted miniature from someone else um because there was a shop that wasn't a games workshop and they had like a glass cabinet and you could actually buy painted minis and uh there was a Night Lord's Metal Terminator. And I think it was only, I don't know, a tenner to buy it painted or something. And I thought, and as a 10 year old, I thought the paint job was amazing. And uh, yeah, bought that. But yeah, so Chaos, Chaos Terminators and Abaddon are like mm. really quite special to me and ingrained. But I just remember looking up to this painter. He was probably just like 16 or something, but I was 10. Um, and just thinking, yeah, that's super cool. Um, and I definitely painted a couple of Addons. I think, I think when I was 10, I probably painted three Dantes and two Abaddons. That's kind <laughs> of how I hobbied 
to Asriel, so she did the same thing over and over, really. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to do something different, but you don't have to. It's such a good pose. Um, but I really enjoy doing little conversions and stuff. But, so. but that's it. Like, I don't think what you did was... It would never be disrespectful, would it? Because it's artistic. But it, it's, it's, you've done it because it's a fucking awesome base model to create a new, amazing your interpretation of a badden from, right? And yeah. and and that's the thing. Someone's saying in the chat, "Oh, isn't it already a classic?" And I, we, you know, we did have a discussion around, "Or oh, how old can the model be?" You know, before it's considered. And we we sort of had somewhere between five and ten years as a, a sort of cutoff point. But it's all you know. It's all a bit wishy-washy, so don't stress too much on on that side of things. It feels too new to be a um, classic yet. I, if we're going to be like I that, I think I think so. I think he needs at least another five years before you start talking about him as a as as a classic. Well, I think um, when we're really old, he'll still be a current mini. I can't see him. Being well, there's that side of things too, years. right? Um, yeah. But but what? But why would you? And again, this this is, you know, they they drop they drop some models, character models, often, but you know. Not always. Sometimes it's a unit that you've been looking forward to, and you're just like, "Oh no, like, I, I hope that gets redone." And I just can't see that happening with this. Um, you know, it's 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 easy mm. enough to convert yourself. Um, I chopped mine to bits um, and and made a, a word bearer's sorcerer out of mine. Um, you know, I say Andy's changed his up into into a bad. Matt, have you had a go at him before? Nope. We go just sort Matt out with this. Um, it would be interesting. Such a good see mini. The because obviously a bad to us is the nineties Jess Goodwin mm. sculpt. We see it through very rose tinted nostalgia for mm -hmm. what like just because it is. It'd be interesting to see because we have now a direct comparison in 10, 15 years' time when this is nearly, you mm. know, twenty five years old or whatever. Will the people that this was their first Abaddon have the same nostalgic view as we hold? Great with point. The nineties one. Yeah, great point. And I hundred percent think yes. Mm. And I think that's why Especially you have you, read you have books, to put him right? in. Yeah. Well, that's you know, does he have an unfair advantage in that he is a pivotal character in one yeah. of the you know biggest sci-fi. You know, science fiction things, right? He's got a demon sword, a massive claw that he nicked off his dead dad. Big it's, hair. <laughs> it's, it's so cool. It's like, it's really over the top, but not cheesy. It's a like, metal it's album cool. come to yeah. life, isn't it? It's cool. Um, do you know what? I really want to paint another one just chatting about it. and looking Yeah, me too. I, kind of, I phoned it in on the paint job on mine. Oh, so it'd be nice to do another one. I've um, binned mine recently. Unbelievable. Yeah. But, I was going back to the trophy rack, yeah. though, I think being without the nostalgia, like the um, the lines that you get, I'm using my mouse, but you can't see, but the lines you get from the arc, they follow the shoulder pad and they frame mm. it so well. I, absolutely. It's parallel to the sword with those side spikes. It's it's really cool. Thank it's you. Really nice Thank change. you. I went off on one earlier, and that was the point I wanted to make. So yeah. thanks for <laughs> thanks for remembering that. Um, yeah, it's, it is. He's it's great. Right, he's going in. He's in three for three so far. The chat aren't disagreeing yet. Rich girl, I need to finish. Rich, my... you need to finish a you lot do, of Rich. things and anything really, mate. <laughs> I really hope model. you finish that that um, play Dante Marine squad. Um, no Dante. Nah, I can't be fussed about Dante. No, no Nurgle. Give, give me Apart give me horse. some uh, give me some Death Star Star Terminators. Yeah, finish please. those. Yeah. No, I'm saying finish Dante and the Nurgle horse because sack off those crappy Nurgle marines. Unbelievable. They're terrible. Unbelievable. <laughs> Dante. Um, <laughs> <laughs> only to what Seb's other mini. Oh, it was Gilliman, Rob. So this the, the, the his tennis partner. So I sorry, just on Gilliman, I think he could have been a future classic if he was reposed. I actually mm. really like the the bits on him, like the backpack super cool. The head's pretty cool, like the helmet, the sword. Yeah, I like all the stuff on him. I just think the pose lets it mm. down. If he went in that file and re and tweaked a couple bits, I really, I would love to paint it. Um, and I think the Secret Workshops paint job of Gulliman is mental. Mm. I asked to buy that, got denied. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
couple of shouts for the new Nurgle horse. Well, we will see. Um, yeah. Right. Next. Next. Ah, <laughs> from Abaddon to Crabaddon, you say? <laughs> I was forced to put it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it, yeah, it's a classic. Move on. Come Thank on. you. What else do we need? Do we need to talk about the crab? I just think if you're looking at that criteria of it changed up the miniature, the way miniatures were getting done and released and all the rest of it, an awful lot of Games Workshop stuff now comes with critters. They've realised that we are simple folk that enjoy pets. Some people. On, on Not the everyone. You like cats. You know, yeah, they... so just in fact, in cats fact, with you, wings. You, you, in fact, you way prefer animals to people. Yeah, that's true. So, <laughs> my You're reasoning wrong. for Crabbo being in here um, is is that essentially. Now, I'm not saying he has to necessarily go into future classics. I do think he'll be remembered, though. I do you think you get he, that South Park you, you song know, in your head when you see it. Crab like, people, yeah, Crab people, yeah, Crab Jensen, yeah. <laughs> Dan, just, just desperately trying to justify this. I am. I'm not. I don't say I'm desperately trying to justify. It, but I think if you look at it, you know, if you're talking, didn't it get tennis, voted model of the year? Right, right. Yeah. So there you go. It's significant. See you later. Yeah, but it's it's like Eurovision. Like it's just a popularity contest. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. And what's wrong with being popular? You know, sometimes you just need to be a bit of a basic bitch and say, I like little critters. They make have we done a, have we done a best critters episode? No, have that's obviously that? coming. That will be part two. Um, can we, can uh, we do um? Can we do a YouTube video? We meant to last painting year. Load, painting loads of critters. We, yeah. we meant to do a Christmas critter special, didn't we last year? We never did. But we'll do it for just the Cotter Paint channel. We'll just you and me. We'll paint loads of critters. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. 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 Should, cool. should we call this we'll one classic tomorrow. adjacent? Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I, Will paint think... you wash out your whore mouth? That's not the ABBA of Warhammer models. How dare you? Well, I think it would have changed Games Workshops, um, like what they do, because they went, holy, they love the crab, and they probably started doing more critters, like remember how popular this exactly. is. Exactly. So, yeah, I think it changed the game, or it would have at least have some impact, genuinely. Um, uh, I used I mean... it in a game. It wasn't that good, by the way. <laughs> End of the soup. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Todd, how about the Warcry Pirate? Exactly. There's tons of critters now, but I feel like do, doing uh, crab was crabs the OG was the real sort of. He he was the one that he was the viral critter hit that that we all needed. Um, yeah. So yeah. Right. Next proper proper one. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yes, this is just amazing. I found mine the other day, actually, that I prepared and didn't start painting, but Max already did the perfect paint job on it. <laughs> what, so, what are you going to do? The Death Master, the Skaven Death Master. Now, this one, I think, came in for the two two criteria, really. One, lots of great painters do it, want to do it, will do it, all the rest of it. But again, it's range-defining. Um, mm. And I think particularly when you have something as important as Skaven are to the Warhammer fantasy IP, or Warhammer AOS IP, their, their fantasy universes, you know, something that is theirs. Yes, of course, there's rat people in whatever, but Skaven is theirs. Um, and I think to produce an amazing looking range, you know, that hopefully is only going to get better and more complete and uh, consistent. Um, but to then absolutely nail it and distill it into one model which they did with his sculpt is a hell of an achievement right and he's just a tiny little rat yeah do we know who sculpted just... this one? Oh, i don't i don't know i don't think it's seb um although you know he he very much led that change of direction for not, the, wasn't for, steve was it for skaven um splinter from the ninja turtles i mean it's not far off is it um uh 
Rich made a point about the sassy Nurgling being a, one of the most popular critters. But are Nurglings critters? I don't know if they are. Yeah, and also I th I think the Nurglings were a bit of a gimmick. What and the crab wasn't? No, because it's because it's <laughs> because Nurglings is like snotlings, right? Yeah, it's a bit is a it's silly thing for, for that army. Critters are for everyone, mate. What have we got now? We've got swamp baboons. We've got walking snails. We've got knife fighting monkey and parrot. We've got you know all the fish. E everyone gets critters now. Mm. Um, whereas the nurglings are just a giggle, aren't they? I don't. I'm not hating on them, um, but I, I don't think I don't think sassy nurgling is. I don't even think sassy nurgling is the best nurgling. So. Yeah, you're wrong. There are better Nurglings. Uh, Dan J paints. Please no more crab. Dan J, been great having you here for the episode. Thanks ever so much for watching. So, day of God free, just all crabs. <laughs> yeah, might have to uh, rethink that. Not so. Back to the Death Master. Um, yeah, reasons reasons for. I think that what you said is rain. I think it's Skaven defining it and like mm. you said with the bad and show people stuff you're like all right what what different aos factions are there i could get into well there's rats that are also assassins here you go um yeah that's cool <laughs> <laughs> um i think also it shows we talked about the old one death death master snitch with the triad knives we talked about that as like a um a massive classic and i think the fact that this is I'm going to say it's better um, just because it's not posed two-dimensionally or anything. It just kind of shows how sculpting's moved on and the fact that it's... Often models come out and everyone goes, oh, I prefer the old one. But this was like, holy, I love this. And yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. just moved Skaven on and we already had fantastic Skaven models. But I think I think Skaven are a really cool Warhammer thing, like a, one of the better factions, and I think this has got to be the best Skaven model. I can't think of a better one. Mm, I think it's tough. Mm, better. Hard word, isn't it? There's Is Skaven this the defining models Skaven? I like more, but I think... What do you like more? I think you're... But, the, but I recognise it's my personal taste. Because I prefer certain elements of Skaven, say, more than Eshin. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not a good model. And I think, again, looking at it purely objectively, I, I, I think it's incredibly hard to fault a, 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 as a model. Um, and again, it's, I think it's interesting that people that aren't generally fans of Skaven, like <laughs> yourself, <laughs> like it. Sorry, just a comment. Just got me. What's be better if like? it was riding a crab instead of a wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's a man of taste there. I, I need, the, I've got both in, those models. In the I've, chat. Got them, I've got them both. Um, Aesthetic saying in the chat as well, the Skaven line's old as fuck. Um, it's parts of it really are. Um, it's it's mix, isn't frustrating. It? Um, but hopefully, you know, I'm hearing good mutterings. Um, yeah, Todd's saying Ikit Claw. Ikit Claw's probably my, my favourite. It's an older mod than this and whether you consider that a classic, I don't know. Um, ah, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't argue against it. Now, it's hard. It's one of my favourite ranges. It's one of my favourite races. It's blah, blah, blah. Um, this isn't my favourite model in the range, but I think as an argument for this being the Stone Cold classic of the range. Um, and I hadn't... I know it sounds daft. I hadn't considered the similarity to Snitch. Um so the death master right and you've got the triangle boomerang yeah and I, that because obviously we only spoke about it fairly recently didn't we but i hadn't noticed the little um you know triangle shape again that's mm. been made in the sculpt mm -hmm. um uh, and all of that yeah so and it's it's a little bit more serious um and i don't mind that i like my warhammer with a bit of humor um, but I'm I do, serious for I do like, like, if you look at, say, Cruel Boys, this for Skaven, the City's release, um, you know, uh, some of those newer undead models, that's the new Warhammer. That's that's where we're at with it now. Um, and I think it's a very good um, sort of 
example of it. Um, so yeah, I I think he deserves to go in. Mm. Um, so we will see chats. See what the chats said. I mean, they obviously still think the crabs are better, but uh, we've got to well, move I was, on. I was waiting for the point to drop this in, <laughs> but I think this is the right time. But. I'll, I'll be more polite in here than when people tell it to me. But every time a mini comes out now, everyone goes, oh, there's going to be loads of things at Golden Demon. But they say that about every mini because mm. so many good minis came out. But this came out and everyone went, there's going to be loads of these at Golden Demon. And there was a couple. Mm. But not, there's not loads of anything anymore because they make so many good minis. Like every AOS monster that comes out, mm. people say it's going to be loads. And yeah, there's one or something like that. Um, but yeah, this this was one that everyone said there's going to be tons of. And yeah, there was it's just like one free. or two. Free exactly, yeah. Time. But there's so many good ones, I think that's the point. So yeah. it's not it's not a negative. It's just every other week there's a, a brilliant one. So picking uh, the real classics out of all the amazing minis is quite hard, I think. It was really hard, right? Like going going through the, I can't remember what it was, but there's hundreds of characters. You know, we went through units as well as characters. All this, like, there's an awful lot of great models out there. Um, mm. But but I think as well, people presume, oh, loads of people paint this for Golden Demon, and then don't actually. Like, mm. oh, I'm not going to do that. Everyone will do that. I think that can happen as well. So, oh, God, he's good, isn't he? Goofy, yeah, Grimdark. It was really yeah. the, the the mini that set the tone going forward for the new skate and stuff which is really cool I yeah i can't absolutely. wait for the proper release man they've mm. had all these practices you know we've got two <laughs> brilliant underworlds war bands we've got this it's like right we know you've we've know you've nailed it you've had your yeah. practice run get that new box set out get rid of stormcast as well get cities as the <laughs> main, main goodies that's the one right in the bin that's it cities well, and skaven let's oh. not blow let's not blow it too 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 early um but we will our, our next week's episode is going to be a new uh format no not format basically we're going to do a full episode range type. full range review uh of the new cities uh release it's a sigma release from games workshop um and we'll we will discuss that a lot i imagine next week um so yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah this guy goes in what we got next frogs someone in the chat earlier saying do you reckon the slam made it in yes the slam did make it in 12 out of 10. i i was arguing that the slam was the future classic um and i think rich was arguing that croak was the future classic nah so <laughs> slan's way better have it out slan is way better but again, I, we're talking, oh, the slan is a 13 out of 10 as opposed to 12 out of 10, you know? <laughs> yes. No, the cro croak's nine and the slan's 11. Croak's not discuss. <laughs> my, um, only, my only problem with croak is I find it so hard to look at it. Focal points. It's so difficult to, to just even read where he's sitting. It's just yeah. hard. I think I mean, one still of the amazing. issues with that is because he's basically a mummy, right? So, you mm. you know, you're trying to draw focus in on those feathers and things like that. Um, but he's, he's, he's dark. Um, but yeah, it it's, doesn't have as pleasant or simple composition, I think, as the regular one. Um, it, it benefits as well, Croak, from being seen in person, doesn't it? Because it it's does. got a lot more depth than you can see mm. in, the, in, in the photo. Yeah, that's right. But I think um, the I think the fact that yeah, I don't know, there's something about reining it back a little bit on the normal slan, um, and it's just more focused, and it feels I don't know, it's just nicer to look at. I think. I mean, they're both incredible, and the but, two uh, options are equally amazing. There's um more than two. There's yeah, there's a few. You can combo the lot. Mm -hmm. um and there's three faces which is cool there's like one with a helmet which is not painted this one and then the other one um yeah it's just amazing amazing and then a few different plates on the uh floaty seat but yeah this is uh it's an incredible kit isn't it it's just so good but what makes it the classic oh gosh what makes it a classic <laughs> 
So my one of my reasons for nominating it as as and not just because I, I love it is that there's there's a lot of there's certain miniatures that you you wish certain painters will will do. And you look at them, you think, oh, I can imagine so and so's version of this, or I can imagine so and so's. And again, miniatures that I think bring out the best in people. They make them try really hard. They 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 make you want to become a better painter to to do it right. And and I'm speaking personally here, and I'm, I'm making assumptions, but that's that's again what the slam does for me. You know, this this particular, I feel like it would be like a graduation type miniature. Um, like if you you paint that slant to the best of your ability, you're going to be a way better painter by the end of that than you were when you started it. You know, I, I think it's just, it, but it's not too intimidating. Whereas Croak is, is terrifying. Yeah. It's quite versatile, isn't it? Cause you could, you could, um, contrast paint it and it would look pretty wicked. Uh, absolutely. Right. It, it, it's just, Oh, it's hard. It's it's yeah. Another, I mean, that's that's another really really good point. You know, is is if if a piece is so important as it is, the slan is to an army, right? Because I think it's important again to to consider Games Workshop stuff within the context of their settings and where it sits within a range and all the rest of it. You know, and the frog is is everything to lizard to seraphon and if you know you've you've basically got to paint one for your army firstly you hope it's a cool model don't you because like oh god I hope my boss isn't crap um but equally is is you know you, you imagine imagine if you do what what are they called the bone lads um the osseart bone rippers and you've got to paint catacross like that's an intimidating model there's nothing you're going to have painted like that before um, you know, there's so much to him, and you've probably got to have him in your army. And it's not worth it because the rest of the army is so crap. Well, looking. there's that too, right? Um, but you know, the slan, exactly as you said, you can use your contrast paints and he'll still look fab, or you can spend a year painting him and he's going to be one of the best things you've ever seen. Mm. Um, and it's, yeah, again, it's that that versatility that I, again, finding faults, I couldn't really find faults with him. Um, no. I don't necessarily think he's range defining um because i think there's other incredible you know I, i'd argue the lizard the on you did better yeah i was gonna say the lizard on the um what they called saurus on the raptodon i think is probably yeah. a more range defining um yeah i think so as well but but the frog is just yeah i think the lizard man range is my favorite army range mm. out of every system i think better than anything 40k um I, i'm just glad it exists i i, mean, I, I don't want to paint it myself because i've got unfinished armies but like um m my friend uh is, is doing his army he's actually doing it so if i finish my lumineth i can play against mm. lizard lizard men army which is just a joy uh, i'd love it you know if ben does his cities of sigma army I just think it'd be incredible to be like, oh, I'm going to go play the new Lizardmen army. I'm mm. going to go play Cities of Sigma. And I'm just super pleased they exist. And actually, even though I don't want to touch those ranges for an army, it makes me want to finish my Lumineth because the uh, I can't imagine having a Lumineth army and then going up against a quality, you know, an army of that quality of these Lizardmen and uh, um, Cities of Sigma as well. Just cemented AOS, really. But again, you were very tempted with the slam. You started the slam. I will. I'll come back to it. Mm. I think uh, I wasn't. I wasn't happy with my color scheme, but the thing that um, the main thing I want is I want to completely change the build I'm doing because the build I did is the one everyone's doing, um, which is the feathered hat and this staff in the air. So I'm just ditching that because I just I've, everyone's done that one. Uh, so I want to do this lad uh, with the crystal skull. Just because, mm. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I will come back to that mini for sure. Uh, yeah. but I don't know when. But I, I can't think of a color scheme because, you know, you have it in your head and you try. It just doesn't work. So I just need to come back another day, really. Maybe just do green. Keep it easy, you know. Yeah, true, true. Uh, well, I can't wait to see it when you're done. I really can't. 
It'll be better in the end. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's next up one. next? Ooh. <laughs> okay. So, so the positive I've been on any mini so far. Speak it. Same. Seven so, out of ten for me. So, who nominated him? Rich. <laughs> <laughs> so here's rich's nomination so chat you might have to take the role of rich here uh and argue why you think the new avatar of Kane model um oh thanks very much i wish i could say your name syrup chire syre esco Ciresco, but thank you um that's really nice um yeah the new avatar of Kane. i also i think rich has picked the least coolest of the um versions here as well nah i like this one best <laughs> um it's a three and a half oh three and a half out of ten that's a bit harsh richard that's that's mean uh, uh six five or six fine <laughs> <laughs> dan um, saying the uh, forge or one's more iconic yet yeah, i was I think, just gonna say that so. it's a way better pose it mm. the, it's just the posing it's mm. it's kind of like gilliman it's like the files there but the pose is a bit lame and that's, it's so important, the posing on stuff, right? Like even the way he's striding, even if he was looking forward, sword back, hand, just, well, the Forge World pose is amazing. Both of them, the throwing spear one, the striding forward, they're both nicer poses, in my opinion, to this one. And they also should have made the flames a stick on option. Yes. Well, chat's agreeing with you. And I think we've, we're kind of going over old ground here. I think we, we had this discussion yeah. when we, we did featured him in the glow up episode, you mm. know, and it's very hard to, you know, we're not here to shit on people's work. We've never wanted to be that. Um, so I, th I think it's safe to say that this hasn't quite hit the future classics for us. No. Um, and with Rich not being here to argue it, I think it's a bit harsh for us just to, um, just 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 to bag on it um but safe to say very cool model um but uh but yeah i think we'll park this one and just move on swiftly um, yeah <laughs> to ones we to ones we can argue about um so sorry this sorry guys this show should have gone out last <gasps> week and we had to miss it here we go now, this one i, I think out of 10 it's 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 i said the other week oh, i think it's top top five models they've ever made i'm th maybe top three now um, I think it's the boat. It is. Oh, yeah. They really went. Uh, they, they've changed something about how they've sculpted horses. It, it well, looks... yes, they're a lot better, aren't they? Yeah. That like... one foot in the air. Hmm. Wow. It's, it, we haven't... it's amazing. We haven't seen too many horses from them in quite a while. So it's. Something's changed dramatically, <laughs> and and the base is beautiful. Like yeah. I, I want, I want to add more to that base, but uh, three hundred out of ten, yes, correct, Todd. It's, I, I think it's my, oh, is it my favorite? I don't know. Maybe but, the, but, it, but it's in that conversation, isn't it? It's it's you know depending on the day, depending on the mood, this might well be. Your I'm painting model. it. I right. am. I am painting. I'm going to warm up on the one on foot. And then this one, yeah, spend a lot of time on. Um, yeah, it's just beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Can't beat a, a mounted lad. I also, I just, well, I'm going to save the chat. We Actually, we should save a lot of the things for cities. We, yeah, we, we will <laughs> save a lot of it. But su suffice to say, I think he, he this model hit every single one of the criteria. Mm. Um, I don't know the sculptor either, actually. No. Biggest out. ever strategic rock. I don't know if it is, Gary. I don't know if it is, mate. It's certainly quite an elaborate. I mean, it's a strategic it's a wall. wall. It's multiple rocks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's certainly yeah. It's it's yeah. It's, it's going to be it's going to be one of those pieces in ten fifteen years time, like the Green Knight. I so think so. That's I I think it's as good as the Green Knight was mm. in the nineties. All right. Here's a question. Is it the best mounted character they've ever done? Yes. Horse size mount. Like for that range, that sort of style. Mm. Is it better than the Imperial Guard man? <laughs> harsh. <laughs> harsh. Yeah, that was harsh, wasn't it? But 
I'm sorry, that was horse was uh, shite. Uh, bass was great. Um, it's hard because we don't see, like, we haven't seen that many horses, mounted horses thing from them from since like Bretonia was a thing. No, you're right. Not normal men on normal. Yeah, not horses. normal dudes on a horse. We haven't. No, I've I've really enjoyed most of their mounted hero models they've done for AOS. I, I love that they've done them for nearly all the armies, and I think on the whole they've been great representations of those ranges. Um, you know, ones that spring to mind, you've got the the the, the cow llama thing for Lumineth. What's it called, Andy? Sorry. The um Magic Camel. The magic, yeah, that that character. Um yeah. you've got you've well, obviously you've got this you've stuff. you've got that um, like we said, you've got that Saurus Old Blood on Raptor Don. You've got the Cruel Boys uh, Killer Boss on the Great Nash too. If you, you know, there's, they've done them for so many of the armies now. That that great new Chaos Lord on on Chaos Horsey. Mm. So they've the most of them have got them. Um, but yeah, you're right, Matt. We haven't seen basic human. Um, no, I think. it's hard and to judge it. it. I don't want to talk negatively about. Other stuff. No, I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to talk now today. Well, this, we've seen a few human mounted human models recently for a few different ranges from Games Workshop, and this one is, I think, by far and away the coolest. Um, Martin, thanks, Martin, and thanks for dropping in. Um, Martin Peterson, our guest previously, uh, he said this was done by Brian Nelson. Of course, he was. Of course he was. As was the, the guest master. So yeah, Brian Brian's Nelson. my goat, mate. Wow. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> imagine your portfolio is this and that Death Master. Yeah, I, um, I've said it before, yeah. but when when a certain sculptor, you know, gets an assignment, that's that is what can make it good. Not the, you know, not you know, some if someone else and this is you know, it's hard to be not offensive, but it could be given this model to another sculptor and not as good. But it's Brian Nelson, yeah. right? That's just how it. We need to talk about painting. him him soon because i brian nelson i think he's i think he's yeah we should do a spotlight on him he's the clam the clam pack character master wasn't right he? um but he also you know, he changed orcs this. he's had such an influence on so many things you know I, for me he's up there with jez as the most like influential they've had um someone's saying in the chat yeah the Min mignola mike mignola style style thing um any idea on the release date for this? We don't. We I think next, next week is the they popped up on War Warcom, didn't they? This this weekend coming is the um the problem with that is it leaked early, didn't it? Pre order for the the things. Yeah, I think I think one of the issues is, isn't it, is often the workshop will release these army launch boxes or rule books or whatever and they'll have photos of stuff that perhaps is coming out later down the line right um and it was leaked sadly um but we got we got some cool photos it's been a it's been a great series of articles actually over Warcom, but we're going to talk about cities next week so um, do you week. think do you think that the, we got the nova reveals tomorrow do you think that have this we? was yeah do you think this was supposed to be revealed Probably. Nova. No. probably was wasn't it no, no? I, 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 I i think we'd have been seeing this stuff now um i think they'd have saved it for nova because it's a perfect to show the new stuff the weekend before the box release right i mean maybe maybe but i kind of feel like workshop a work so far ahead anyway oh yeah nova's next week mate is it yeah in which which yeah. By which time the book will be in people's hands anyway. Mm, yeah. So yeah, maybe. Mm, mm -mm. Maybe. But anyway, this this would have been. I mean, this would have been a very strong way to have revealed the whole range, right? Mm. <laughs> you know? Can you imagine? I want this model a lot, but yeah. I won't be able to paint it until May. Have they shown? <laughs> so... Have they shown the alternate alternative build to it? Uh, the hat, different head. I think. Right. That's it. Um, but yeah, it's no. That's art. my only critique, actually. I like I like the head, but it could be a little. The helmet could be cooler, considering he's the. You know. He's just keeping it real, man. Yeah, I know, but the guy, <laughs> the guy on foot's got a cool 
yeah. Cities of Sigmar horns, and I want to convert that and stick it on there. Shame I snapped the uh, some. <laughs> if you had any. Exactly. Which you don't. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, going to be good to good to see the, the different takes on this. It's, uh... I just, every time I see the new Cities of Sigmar stuff, I just keep seeing Monty Python. <laughs> Shut yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just not unfair. That's not that. It's not unfair. I see a lot of Ankh-More pork and stuff in it, and I think, yeah, it's it's. Anyway, that's next episode. Do we have any more, or was that it? We do. We have one last one. Oh, agree. Great, agree. great one. How could I forget him? Because he was hiding in the bushes. Sneaky, uh, best, best Tyranid model made. MIA. So I think the Lictor has always been one of the coolest, right? Yeah. Uh, in all its iterations, it's always been super cool. Mm. Um, and the newest version is fucking rad. Like, it's full of... Oh, yeah. Ticks all the boxes. Reading too much Cthulhu stuff with the... <laughs> The old Zoidberg yeah, yeah. action going on. You can do that on so much of the new Nid stuff, um, according to the articles. Um, there's lots of uh, <laughs> lots of lots of tentacly things going on. That's what it says on um, community. That's what it says on community. I hope. Um, I really want to paint it, but I never will. That's all I was going to say. I really want to though. How do you guys feel about top hat and tail coat Death Leaper? I think Death Brilliant. Leaper's incredible. Um, yeah, and the, the whole like cloak thing, I thought it yeah. was meant to be like like them octopuses that have the. Oh, don't say that. Oh yeah, you don't like them, do you? Sir? But that that whole like web thing between the technically things is a. I I'm didn't sure get the rage on that. I don't know what people thing. are moaning about. Do you know who would paint that really well and make it look really gross? Angelo Dicello. Mm. I think he would paint that skirt and make it look really creepy. Um, he'd be brilliant at that. He's done I'm some a, cool. I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm a ten out of ten for Death Leaper, but I get he's more divisive. I'm but, eight on him, but, but the Lick new Lictor, this is 10. all through all the variants that they've probably shown. I heard there's variants. Are they have they have they shown any? <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> anyway, um. This particular version of the Lictor, which may or may not be the only versions of the Lictor, is so. So, why is it going in Stone Cold Classics? Come on, let's finish. Let's finish strong. All right, all right, all right. I think the Lictor is a definitive Tyranid miniature because of all the um, hiding and killing Imperial Guard, basically. Mm. Um, artworks, previous Golden Demon entries. It won a Slayer Sword in America. Todd Swanson's one, super cool. Um, yeah, I think it's just been there, you know, from Golden Demon entries to dioramas, artworks, killing guards. I think the idea of a Lictor is completely horrifying, um, super scary thing. It's yeah, so it's probably probably been one of the best minis through its different iterations. It's got one of the coolest backgrounds, and they've kind of nailed it with the the latest mm. sculpt. Right, it's like a it's basic. It's kind of the same, but a massive improvement as well. Mm. Um, I think, I think like we talked about with the Terminators, when it was such a relief that they nailed the Terminators and they didn't ruin something we love. And that does, sometimes people go over the top by saying, oh, they ruined something, um, because of nostalgic reasons. But this is one of those like, yep, yeah, that's, that is a lick, a lictor and you've absolutely nailed it. Um, and I could see the argument if the one with the skirt was a replacement, and be like, oh, I prefer the, the normal mm. design. I don't want the skirty thing. Then fair enough. But in addition to, then it's brilliant. And we've got the little Ryan's Leapers as well and all these variations. But um, <laughs> like I said earlier, a lot of people going to paint this for Golden Demon. But it would be cool if people painted a really scary diorama mm -hmm. uh, with this miniature, right? Yeah. Yeah, I get anything to add to that. I think that was perfect. I think that's that's it. It's every reason she goes in. There's some great Lictor jokes going on in, <laughs> in, the, in the chat as well. Thanks, that was. Remember, this is aimed at a mature audience, at an immature audience. Um, yeah, I mean, so we could talk about Lictors for a long time because I think they are just 
just so this great stories like you said there's been some amazing pieces featuring them as well and i think that was another sort of criteria this fucking midge flying around in it um you know there's those criteria. you know you, lots of people are going to want to get hold of it and, and paint it and i i absolutely can see some brilliant imperial guard versus lictor dioramas jewels vignettes whatever mm. you want to call it um fe featuring this model and I cannot wait. Uh, someone just said in the chat, Spielberg Baggins, do we think any of the newer Primarchs, Demon or otherwise, are classics? In short, no. But that doesn't mean we don't think that they're fantastic. I don't um, think they're fantastic. But the... <laughs> 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 the but classics, I don't know. I, I mean, even the older Primark models, are they classic? I'm just trying to think through them now. Class Magnus is terrible. Classics. Magnus's torso yeah. is just so bad. Well, I'm thinking of, because um, we haven't featured any Forge World models, for instance, in this. We, we haven't actually featured any models that aren't characters to a degree in this. And again, we had lots in our sort of short list, long list, whatever you want to call it. But again, as we got more and more strict with the criteria to sort of winnow it down you know they, they fell by the side and that's that's why we say there are models that we think are absolute 10 out of 10 incredible models that, but we don't think you would class as a, a true classic what's a classic um, uh i have to be quick what's a classic boring unit miniature then quick fire i'm gonna say guardian elder guardian perfect from the new from the new range right yeah yeah perfect yeah classic. yeah, yeah. great Nailed great it. great example what else is there? Um, normal, normal cities of Sigma men. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to think of boring troops that are spot on. Actually, the um, the Gaunts, the Horma Gaunts are amazing. They nailed those. Mm -hmm. just, New ones are wicked. They're just perfect. They're absolutely spot on. Um, so yeah, I think I think they really nail some of the basic troops, and we always. I, say I think the, the New Imperial Guards cool. basic troop unit is. True. Unbelievable. What about Saurus, Saurus Warriors? Yep. They're amazing. Classic troop. So, yeah, maybe we should do a basic bitches episode. What are the best <laughs> troops? <laughs> but I almost almost feel like with them is you, it's a sigh of relief. Like what, it's, if, you're norm, if you're normal person. If your normal best. troop is a decent model, it's like, oh, thank fuck for that. Like, I haven't got to, you know, rather than, woo! Intercept, rather than Primaris. Uh, well, yeah. Um, corn berserkers they were a cool kit absolutely pretty good um, but not 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 quite up there for me as a 10 mm -hmm. i will behave that's what i was saying <laughs> centurions centurions <laughs> is that there's that the that's the marines in the big yeah yeah the marines and marines God, that's you know old, what's scary is when you look at that. the year those were made yeah that's that was a long long time ago that one now yeah. what's the year on them like Ooh. it's scary it's like 10 11 12 years or something yeah. mad yeah i want to say think, 20 2010 2011 think of it i think of that as a new kit you know yeah. semi new just before primaris primaris came out yesterday right yeah. but i mean funnily um, enough the, the only ones we, we saw the the unit as it were that we did stick in was way back at the start ooh. with the um orc sailors black sailors sorry um someone just said new terminators which i agree but Will they show the multi-part multi version at Nova? That I, would be. You'd, you'd cool. have to imagine that's going to be the big Nova reveal. Right? Oh no, it won't because G Double just dropped fucking something none of us have even thought about, and it'll be like, oh my, here you go, it's next phenomenal. What, what else? You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing new for old world. Someone said Plague Marines are good, and they are wrong. They are one of the worst. <laughs> you like toys <laughs> with cartoon tentacles? I think. Paul saying new Terminators for sure are. Um, it's very, very difficult, I think, to be like. And this is something we, we you know, we always we didn't want to come across as well, dicks, obviously we do, but we don't want to come across too much. You know, we're like, this is the classic, this is the classic. But I think it is, I think it is really, really hard to unequivocally go, that is the the the, the stuff. And I think there's one of the Marines, uh, the Terminators, which loads of people have painted basically. The walking one that's looking Suppose, super, mo yeah. super moody. Mm. That's a classic. 
mm. hands down that model. I don't think that squad is. Um, it's mm. cool. It's fine. Um, I think that if the multi-part set is, um, you know, bang on, that's going to be hell of a kit. Mm. It's just t- Terminators are one of the my- most iconic things. And they're probably the happiest and most relieved I've been um, seeing how they handle those. But yeah, I'm excited for the multi-part. And I hope they do two multi-part sets. I hope they do Assault mm. um, with really classic looking Thunder Hammers um, and Shields and all that. Um, but yeah, because they used to do those, didn't they, with the two sets? Yeah, I just mm. hope they do both again. Um, and then hopefully a, a multi-part Terminator character. I actually think that Terminator captain that you Great, got eh? in Leviathan was very, very good. Yeah, um, really good. And I think if a multi-part one of him comes out, I'd be tempted to do a Red Scorp. You know me and Red Scorpions, mate. Okay. I gave <laughs> you lo- I gave you loads of time. Maybe, maybe we should have... Uh, would, the, would the Space Hulk Termies be considered classics? Oh, uh, gosh, yeah. They're old enough. Off. They're old enough for no? that. They're so annoying. Um. <laughs> I just, yeah, I'm just I'm fed up of those. Someone's Maybe saying in the chat times. the new cultist range is really good. Yeah, I I agree. There's if you're a fan of that side of chaos, you've got an amazing mm. bunch of miniatures you can you can purchase now from Kill Team and the main release and uh, uh, and all of that. Um, but again, these are great things that are wonderful to many people. But we're look we're trying to really weed out absolute creme de la creme and that's where we got to now i'm sure there's ones we might have missed so do let us know in the comments uh, if you're watching this back uh, and if there's enough um shouting we might have to uh, see if we can slot a few more in i reckon I we can go up one. to 10 how many if, how many have we got on here Matt? how many slides we got there 10 um, got to be close to 10 right seven eight nine nine so i reckon we can get 10 in so if we can find the tenth, I don't mind adding that in a future episode. But then if anything else is going in, it's got to replace something. It's got to be better, objectively better than one of the ten things that's in there now. I'd love to do top three for each part of the Force Org chart. So what are the top <laughs> top three HQs, yeah, the yeah, top yeah. three troops, and all of that? That would be that'd fab. Be good, I'd love to do that. Um, I Not mean, we're we po- kind, kind of doing that anymore. next week with uh, the Caesar Sigma review anyway. Um, right, replace the avatar. Well, the avatar didn't get in there, did it? But we'll talk about that in the future. Um, right, <laughs> let's close it out with paint cultists. Well, we've got one thing before that. What? what? Oh, future classics, have we? No, I think we've yeah, had them all, haven't we? Matt? Uh, the little, little thing you wanted to tease. Don't worry about future classics. The miniatures we think will be talked about in 10, 20 years' time. What are you on about? Matt's looking panicked. What? See? What are you on about? <laughs> the uh, the slide you had me made up, make up with the What's images. The slide? Chuck it, me. chuck it on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell if he's acting or we forgot. Um, what's this? Day of God two. <laughs> what we're talking about here, boys? You like that? Definitely, we can't be showing anything here. What what are we talking about? Well, that's not much of a tease, is it? That's just a. That's just a really nice slide talking about our upcoming second season of fantasy models coming out next year. So it's not, that's nothing to worry about then. Right. Next slide. Which one? <laughs> I don't know. What you, I don't know if you're serious or not now. I'm, I'm, I don't either. I'm, I'm completely. Show them off. the next slide. Show them the next elf model. There we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, this um, is a bloody classic. Yeah, we've been sitting on this for a while. We just wanted to show you. So here you go. Um, this is possibly one of the miniatures we're most proud of creating. Um, and it will be coming uh, early next year, uh, along with quite a few other ones. So we will talk about her and her chums. Uh, in some Look at that side profile. Episodes. Um but yeah, got any more angles of that? Oh, that's a nice angle as well. <laughs> I was really lost then, Matt. Were you? Yeah, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> um, yeah, th- this is the mini I want to paint the most right now, but alas, I cannot. But uh, other people will. 
Uh, it will be good. Kickstarter, Richard, same as with the last one. I'm afraid we are nowhere near big enough as a company to uh, to just stock them and hope they sell. Um, it is when a, a, a the, real uh, lifeline for, for companies like ours. It's, it's, this is the first time I've seen it when you sent the images <clears throat> to make the slides, and I was like, yeah, that's, that's pretty damn cool. I'm, I'm on that. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, just... we're pretty excited. Just a quick, quick one. We'll talk about another time. But we've got 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 new resin. It's amazing, mm. really amazing quality. It's a beautiful mm. size miniature. Um, it's yeah, actually one it's... of the smallest miniatures in our second uh, season. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I really, I really want this to be a classic. But obviously, you, you, it's kind of hard. It's in your own, in your own eyes. You think it's beautiful. But as soon as I saw this silhouette. I was like, come on, that's amazing. So, yeah, I'm desperate to paint this. Um, it will be 54 mil, Richard, but we are toying with the idea of doing a Kickstarter uh, exclusive 75 for this character. So um, we're still yeah. thinking. Um, but, yeah, so enough of that self-indulgent. But, you know, it's our Print podcast, screen. so there you go. Um, right, paint cultists. Hashtag paint cottage. So if you fancy following a new hashtag on social media, largely Instagram uh, and on our Discord channel, you've got uh, hashtag paint cultist. So if you want to expose yourself to maybe styles of painting or miniatures um, or just accounts you won't normally come across in your algorithm thing that they do on there, um, then, then give this a follow. Um, we have found so many. I mean, there's 26,000, 27,000, something like that on there. There's a lot. Um, tons of good stuff you know multiple times a day you know there's new things going up on there which is amazing to see we had no idea it would be quite so popular uh, and all we do is grab a couple and just have a quick natter about them at the end of an episode but before we do that i keep forgetting i've forgotten to do this for ages we found an account called man painting miniatures uh who has appeared in paint cultists and has appeared in some of our like this is my faves and all the rest of it and they painted what i thought was my favorite miniature of last year um, and also painted this incredible uh thing here which led to quite the discussions of um it's just a couple of pairs um but uh, but i said how much i would love to have um some prints of those uh paint jobs on my wall um so the person very kindly made some prints and sent them through so i will be getting these framed up and um put next to my book bookshelf of nostalgia and dreams <laughs> so yeah just want to say massive thank you it's really sweet um it's really kind and um yeah it's awesome so thanks very much let's take a look at some more who's up first oh loved 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 the skin on this model just yeah is that change the face on it don't think... limit is that is that that terrible limited edition model has made it look good it, it has options doesn't it oh wow that's so much better yeah is it the the that's the the special edition one yeah mm -hmm. wow no idea what this I, is. I, I really didn't give that miniature the time of day but this paint jobs really uh elevated it and um really cool uh, paint job right and the base is really good as well that's one of the, the best get sort of you know on a gaming base little snow base is super cool mm. yeah, yeah i mean fantastic. that's pretty that's pretty high-end gaming paint paint job yeah crazy <laughs> I think, um, but yeah it's just it's that you know we all know it it's the barbarian from the north or if you're into warhammer you know it's your it's your chaos marauder what it is rich at weekends um <laughs> and um yeah uh this it's just I, I unusual to see it done so differently um but so but so well so that was my sort of yeah reasoning yeah that's a really good for, one um, for picking it i'm just going to try and find out what the name of it is um is it event exclusive is that what they call them now yeah i'll have a look what's the next slide while i'm having a search for that nice oh i had to do this love seeing you know new versus old 
um, thingies. And I thought this was a really, really lovely painting style as well. Yeah, it's very nice. It's quite soft, quite just... So they added that blue flame as well, as that little mm. sculpt on there. Oh, yeah, cool. cool. That's nice. Like a little bit of resin or something. Yeah, that is cool. So, really um... nice colours, aren't they? Like really uh, nice mm -hmm. soft touch, yeah. Yeah, very exactly. Cool. Um, so yeah, just very, very impressed with that one. Um, and... You know, one on the left's cooler. <laughs> so, yeah. what have we got uh, on for the next one? Oh, my goodness me. So, this was from Dogma Finland, I want to say. Cool. Um, I picked it a week ago. I'm trying to remember now. Um, yeah, I'm sure it was the fin Finnish Dogma. Um, this is perfection. Mm-hmm. That's too it. many orange <laughs> just it, perfection it, I wonder if it's homage to my favourite miniature ever painted the, the which is... camel alien no um, it's um, it's like a deaf jester with a scythe on his back and it's blue, this oh. blue with an orange backdrop it's my favourite mini ever we've done it in the podcast before nice. uh, it was Martin Gomez. I can't remember what it's called but yeah it reminds me of that a lot it's I was just... in a bidding war for that and lost. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think I remember, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. It's I should just, have bought it. It's just beautiful. It's uh, it's it's even better now Matt has cropped it so that the, the account <laughs> tag wasn't covering the little person on the bottom left. Hey, it was a long day. Um, I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... You do a lot for us, Matt. Thank it's, you. It's like I always feel like a dick asking Matt to change something when it comes to like technology or whatever. But I was like, Matt, good. there's only there's only two fucking things in this <laughs> this picture. <laughs> you you just stuck a banner over one of them. Um, yeah, it's just lovely. It's just it's lovely, lovely, lovely. And I, I'll this is one of the reasons I want to I want to see more stuff like this at shows. You know, hmm. um, yeah, it's just it's just wonderful. So, yeah, uh, if you're unsure about Dogma, we did an episode, uh, gosh, probably six months or so ago now, maybe a bit longer with some probably of the guys years ago. Um, that, that, do, <laughs> that do it. Um, so, uh, yeah, go and check that one out. Uh, right. What's up next? I think there's a couple more, is there? Oh, cool. This is beautiful, right? And <laughs> yeah. tiny. It's the coin for scale. Right. What coin is that? Liberty. It's got to be American. Uh, quarter. Useless. Um, so, yeah. America. Super cool. Um, I, oh, I'm desperate. I picked these a week ago. So I'm desperately trying to remember. I think I think they're STLs. Um, so I think you can print them yourselves. But go and check the account out. They've got all the details and stuff on um, on, 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 their, on their posts about it, where, where you can get the miniatures from if you like it. Uh, but you can get this mini. It's not like a one-off or anything like that. Yes, it's Great uh, by... Job. I can't pronounce. Toma. Yeah. He's, he's Tom Mason is the sculptor. Right. Mm. Yeah, that colour is beautiful. Isn't it? Though, isn't right? It? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I can't what see blue and purple. I, I, you know I really struggle with blue and purple. It's, um, it's blue with a, with a bit of purple right. in mate. Bit of red. Right. <laughs> I thought it was really it's lovely. It's like a lilac. Isn't it? Right, it is lilac. Okay, so cool. So I was going to be like, oh, so you can't see blue, purple. I can't see red, green. It's great. I know it's a great. <laughs> it's a great, and you know, and Andy, Andy can't see anything without his glasses on. So it's it's a hell of a. Hey, I can actually. Tree. <laughs> I'm only um, minus <laughs> minus point five. So basically nothing. Oh, smashed! It. Wish I was that. That'd be great. I do remember that though. Um, right, one more. Uh, there is oh. one more after this. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Don't remember picking that one. I always try and put a marine in for Rich. Um, well, yeah, I love, it. love an orange marine. Little, little uh, damage on the shoulder pad, that little mm. dent. Oh, yeah. the, rich, the rich grey bullet, that is. Yeah. Is it? That's, rich, that's the rich grey signature move now. Ooh, nice. Um, yeah, really cool. Yeah, that highlighting on the orange is super nice on the arm, isn't it? I like that style a lot. It's a really cool style, isn't it? And again, not not seen very often on 
on a Warhammer miniature. Mm. Primaris are almost cool, aren't they? So much there isn't there to love. So but apparently, a couple, couple changes. The coin was a dime, not a quarter, so it's very small. But it's American money, so it's all waste. <laughs> it's freedom money. What are you about? Right. Um, yeah, super cool. So one more, and then we can one more. close out. Oh, we have to have a Lucas one. Here. Have to have a Lucas one. Here. Oh, and I know there was a good story behind this one. I can't remember Square what it was, enough, so I'm going to make story. it up uh, in that this person painted it for their brother-in-law or something like that. It was, it was definitely, I'm sure it was a friend, painted for a friend, or it was the second miniature they painted. Some great story. Uh, go and check out. Birthday. There we go. There we go. And they had a pet squirrel. My memory's shot to shit, so like, you know, this being over a week ago is, is impressive. <laughs> um, but again, just another beautiful, characterful storytelling sculpt and i think a lovely a lovely paint job i really like the sleeves um on him it's just yeah it's just lovely and I a nice presentation the arm and the uh and the branch with the squirrel on like i mm. cut that off yeah yeah have, right just have the hand presenting yeah. the nut to the squirrel i'd love to do that i don't want to do the rest really you know so now you're gonna to have to just start buying two of every one of his sculpts. So you've got one I do you can anyway. cut up. <laughs> I do. I, I just order two of every one. <laughs> They're absolutely stacked up. I got one for you actually. I got Ooh. you. Um, I got you the goblin that you like. Oh, did you? Shield. Oh, yeah. thanks, mate. But I'm not giving it to you unless you paint it. Yeah, I know. Well, I guess I'm never getting that then. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if you like, right, I'm going to paint this. For a, you know, right, whatever. Well, all this then time, I'll, I thought, I'll, give, yeah. I'll give it. Yeah, I'll do. <laughs> I'll good. do. I will do your Keep YouTube safe. video for the week. Yeah. you can have a week off. Thanks. Keep it safe. We'll uh, yeah. we'll, we'll have a go. Oh, that's really cool. Mate. Oh, thanks very much. Um, but yeah, so closing it out with what we started with, um, a Spira Mirabilis, uh, Lucas Peanut sculpt. So Can't there wrong. we go. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with us about uh, accounts, artists you think we should uh, follow or feature or perhaps a subject for an upcoming show, you can get a hold of us on all the usual social media side of things. Probably Instagram. Instagram or email is probably the best way to get a hold of us uh, if you need to. Um, but, yeah, I really enjoyed that one. I've been waiting on that for weeks to do this episode. Fun. I think it's, fun. you know, it's, um, yeah, nice. And really nice, I think, to get in some non-GW minis as well because they don't get that the airtime that g dub stuff does obviously but I, I think they're they were the two most exciting things in mm -hmm. that top 10 um with regards to in, with regards to impact that was the best um well absolutely <laughs> one day one day we can sit up against those uh up against those big big timers so yeah so if you're watching this back on youtube if you can hit the like and subscribe button and all that stuff and share it really really helps us um we're really keen to keep the podcast going and sort of get it out to as many people as possible um but as ever thanks very much for joining me chaps i hope you enjoyed it as well it's a fun uh, one it was uh it was a yeah. giggle um we see will you see next you week. yeah we will see you all next week where i say we're going to do a full range review for the new cities of sigma by games workshop so thanks chaps thanks chat take care we'll see you soon <laughs>